Hello people, and welcome back to part 17 of the Noob's Guide to City Skylines. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Thanks so much indeed for all the support across our thoughtfully developed suburbia. Uh, again, you guys did just really enjoy this. <laughs> and it's, uh, yeah, I'm constantly blown away every week by the support across this series. I'm really glad you're enjoying this vanilla build on Diamond Coast. And so am I. It's been a really fun city to build. And I really enjoyed this little town centre design I put together. Uh, bringing in lots of big road networks and, you know, working with something a little more thoughtfully planned. I think it came off quite nicely, didn't it? I think it did. And today, we are going to continue talking about how we can design uh, Suburbia, because we're going to work with one of the more trickier designs in City Skylines today, and this is going to be Hillside Suburb. So, we've mentioned it several times before, that when we're playing in City Skylines, when you're building on a hill and you place anything, say, a med clinic, this happens, okay? The, the concrete begins to tear, gets very nasty cut away, which can be terraformed away. But it's just not great, is it? It's really not nice. <laughs> so, we're going to talk about how we can respect the terrain today, alongside trying to avoid some of the vanilla junk that does come with the game. And also, continue to build out our city, of course. You know, remembering what we're actually building here is, you know, on this little hillside, where we have the airport over to our left, and then we have the skyline just over to the right. So, very quite an important build today, you know, it's going to have to respect the terrain. It will probably fill out a good space from this arterial system alongside this natural forest and get some nice flowy hillside designs. And also refine a little bit of the placement here because we've got some surviving Mars assets coming in. No thank you, these are horrific. Just no. <laughs> Don't like those. Yeah, so work on the transition between sort of high-density downtown into flowing hillside suburbia. Develop a little hilltop park, and of course lots of detail in between. So let's talk about how we can work with a hillside suburb in city skyline, shall we? Okay, so we're going to start out by actually building the suburb uh, back to front. I do want uh, kind of the very top of the area today to be designed first. So we're going to come into interviews and we're going to grab our terrain height so we can tell exactly where the top of the hill is into our level terrain tools and put this heat map back on, increase our intensity and our brush size, and then just find that very top contour line. And then we're just going to paint out a sensible size for us to drop in some assets, make a little sort of hilltop park, if you like. So there's a couple of different uniques that will work nicely here. Um, I'm going to use the Fountain of Life and Death and the Observatory today. But again, everyone's preferences and tastes are going to be different. And for the vast majority of the suburb, I'm also going to be using the European two-lane stone bridge, um, just because it has the little sort of white tiles against its, as its sidewalk, which is very much uh, what I'm after today. Quite a nice, fancy hillside suburbia design. So, let's place my first unique. I know this is a level two, and I want to grab the Fountain of Life and Death. This is going to sit here for me. Okay, so it's a nice little hilltop park. It's going to be quite a nice viewpoint as well for people looking out here. Let's now box this in so we can see exactly where we're going to sit. And then we can trim off our initial frames. This is going to be fantastic for me for right now. Going to come off the road guideline now. Let's bring out another 10 units. And then let's factor in the position of our next unit building. So there's a lot of different ones that will work here. Um, the little business park one is, isn't a bad shout. Um, if not ever so slightly bold. The uh, kind of big archway. But you can use it here if you like. Equally as much. Further plazas will also work well up here. So, it's all about what kind of vibe you want to take it in. I'm going to crack that one off, but I think I'm going to go for uh, the observatory building itself, I think. I think this is going to go here. Okay, now you could argue from a realistic stargazing point of view, would there be too much light pollution around here? But the aesthetic of a hilltop observatory is um, you know, quite LA and uh, appropriate for what I want to do here. So let's just amend our landmass to accommodate the uh, new road frame now, and then we can start laying out some of our roads uh, for the suburb. Bring this back and around. Now, there's opportunities here now for fleshing out with your part life assets. Um, some of the tourism zonings will actually work very nicely up here, uh, but it has to be specifically zoned without ploppable Rico, unfortunately. That's going to be fine for me. So once you have kind of your top hillside park configured, if indeed that is what you want to do. Uh, so I think I'm happy for this angle here to remain quite steep. I don't really want to level this out, but I do want to start thinking about what's going to happen between the top of the hill and the entry into the suburb. So 
So I'm going to right click the top of the hill. I know this is my very final elevation. And then we're going to come back and we're going to left click the bottom here. I'm just going to dig out a little channel where my main road up to this park can sit. Okay. Now we're creating more of this brown cliff face, but it can always be terraformed away, of course. Let's come back and grab that road again now. And we'll keep this going on a nice big straight road. I think we might upgrade into a treed road for this main avenue. And then as we come up to uh, working on some of the outer line suburbs, we'll do uh, some of the white paved roads again. All right, so there we go. First connection established. It's not massively interesting right now, but it is about to become more interesting. Let's come back onto that uh, European uh, two-lane stone bridge right now, which is from the uh, Bridges and Piers content creator pack. If you don't have this, there will be a link down to Instant Gaming below. Okay, so again, coming on with our terrain heights now. Uh, let's also come off of a road guideline snap here. I really just want to start following the curvatures of the contour lines with the road, but without becoming kind of too sharp in our curves, because that really starts to affect the zoning sizes that we get available to us without the zoning adjuster mod. Okay, so just quite gentle curves here. You'll notice what happens if we do quite a tight curve. We get all this shattered zoning, really reduces your sizes down to like two by two, sometimes one. So that's why we're trying to avoid doing very harsh curves with a hillside suburb. So just nice and light and flowing. Now consider what you're starting to sit against as well. I know I'm coming around to my airport area over here. Let's keep this going away. Again, this might not be everyone's sort of episode, but uh, I think it's important because Hillside Suburbia um, is something that can be factored into city skylines. Probably one of the more difficult things to build as well, I think. See now how that curve is ever so slightly too sharp. You know, I'm happy for some of those curves to be in. You know, not every little section of the suburb has to be zoned, but, you know, just be careful that it's not kind of your whole suburb's personality, basically. Okay, so we know we're coming up to this intense sort of brown cliff face now. So let's respect this. We'll bring it that one around the side. Let's come back onto our terrain height view. Okay, and then we know we're coming back to uh, this one now, for which we should be able to uh, snap onto that road guideline. That's good for me. And then we can come back in. Wonderful. And that's just going to give us a nice ring around. You know, we've got some sort of dips and bumps in the road, which is fine. It's very much adding to our hillside suburbia vibe. You know, if one of them is maybe a little bit too intense, then just come through with a touch of soften and then redraw your road. But for the most part, you should be okay. All right. Wonderful news. So let's go ahead and paint out a district because I'm going to want a very specific style of housing uh, to be on this area. We're also going to name this district after one of our wonderful Patreon subscribers. Thank you so much for all your support, Steve and Brassac. We're going to go for Goodwin Hills to lie outside of our downtown. Appreciate the Patreon support, mate. Thank you for everything you do for me. Okay, but this is going to give us our initial sort of frame, if you will. We're going to come in and change this to European Suburbia. Any theme that you like can be applied here. You go for Green Cities if you want, but I want the European Suburbia for this. Okay, so now we're going to come back into our roads and we're going to start bringing out sort of branches of the road frame uh, where we find those smaller, kind of awkward, more shattered tiles, exactly like this point here. Okay, so let's bring this out. And then what I do want to do is just start bringing in a couple little dead end, essentially cul-de-sacs, right? Um, in and around this suburban design. So we'll have one there. Let's go ahead and find another spot where our zoning isn't quite as friendly as we might want it to be. Definitely over here as well. Okay, so we can bring this up and then let's start bringing in again some softer, more gentle curves in a couple of different places. Always trying to bring out these new connections at where the unfriendlier zonings begin to appear. Let's go for some slightly more rigid designs here as well, just a very sort of abrupt T-junction 90 degree turn. Not everything has to be curvy around here, you know. Let's come back into that terrain heights again and see what we're thinking here. Yeah, so again, most of the zonings here are pretty even, so we don't really have to worry about them uh, too much. But again, I can see an opportunity here where we might want to respect the terrain. So let's do that. Let's bring out a new frame and just start to hug 
this little sort of curved landmass, we can perhaps turn this into a little park. Okay, so I'm going to break my rule of, you know, not too many tight corners now, because there's probably not going to be that much zoning uh, sat on this section of the hill. But I'm happy to, you know, respect the topography to quote uh, the wonderful City Planner players. So, you know, paying attention to this terrain height tool is really going to help you map out much more interesting suburbs because you're not kind of set into a pre-set shape, if that makes any sense. You know, you're following the terrain, respecting it, using the ideas of not having too many sharp curves because it's going to start to break your zonable opportunities. So, all things that can be factored in, okay? Again, there's an opportunity where we can see it uh, presenting itself over this way. So I'm going to start mimicking the curves down here now and creating a second layer of our hillside suburb. Let's come back in here now. It looks like there's a, a lovely little opportunity where we can just uh, grab our curve tool here now. Get a nice curve back into there. Wonderful. So I think I'm going to treat this little natural forest here as my boundary as to how far this suburb goes out. But already, I think we're, we're on to something, right? I'm happy with the way the observatory is sitting on top of the uh, the hill there. We can do a lot of rock detailing on this cliff face here too. A bit of commercial around the sort of main plaza. It's going to be nice. It's going to be a nice time. You can see now where I want another layer uh, to start appearing along this one. So let's bring out a new connection where we can. We'll probably have to break one of these more favourable 4x4 four four zones, but we should be okay. Come on to our freeform tool again. And I'm winding up those new zonable spaces so they're not encroaching upon the old ones down here. And then why don't we find a nice sensible place to connect back into the main tree road that comes up the hill and into the park. Bring it down this way. Get a connection in. Okay, so even already, even with the horrendous brown texture, which we will remove some of that today, uh, we're starting to generate a much more interesting uh, road network and suburb design, right? I hope we are. I hope this kind of point comes across. So, I want to carry on mapping out uh, some road networks alongside my contour lines. Uh, probably bring it to a close, probably like about here, is going to be my sort of end point for this suburb. I think that's going to give us quite a natural uh, hillside look from this side. Especially on the approach into the downtown as well. Because essentially this build becomes part of the skyline, doesn't it? So, important that we get it right. So, let's time lapse this up and then we can start zoning and placing some assets down as well. So now I'm happy with my final mapped out road network. Now it's about specifically zoning. So of course, bearing in mind noise pollution that we are by a monorail station, uh, this boy is incredibly loud. But we know that we can fix this uh, with a touch of forest brush. Of course, remembering that trees will uh, ever so slightly dampen uh, the noise pollution value from loud buildings. So you can bear that in mind. So, in terms of growing the suburb now, it is very much um, specifically zoning. You want to be filling out all your main patterns uh, in big chunks as you possibly can get them. Kind of avoid doing shapes like this because you can get the 1 by 3 houses spawning and in vanilla they look just horrific. It won't be too bad with the uh, European suburbia specialization on here, but avoid it where you can, basically. Okay, so just specifically zone up your entire suburb now. I know that things will obviously start to grow as the game plays. And still considering your uh, fractured zoning opportunities as well. You know, I definitely want lots of 4x4 four four lots here because the houses is just, just much more aesthetically pleasing. So, specifically zone where you can. I definitely want to bring in a bus route up this suburb too. And I know that from our 
cruise terminal episode last time where someone has died at the police station. That's not good news. And, but we do have uh, quite a few uh, spare platforms here. So I'm going to use this as an opportunity to bring a bus over into the new suburb. For which we will... Well, so we do already have a bus line here. It's probably worth just extending this one. Yes, it is. Let's do that then. So we'll bring it right up until our at top point here. We will land about this way. That's going to be grand. And let's see where we want to bring this guy off. Maybe let's go for a spot further down here. We will also ensure that he comes down this side. Okay, so let's see if we move this stop first and then we'll bring him back to the top on his way back out of the suburb. I think that's going to make more sense, isn't it? So now we should start to see that bus uh, climb up into the suburb, which is going to give us public transport activity and also access uh, into larger public transport networks like metro and monorail ones, etc. So for that. So, always good to be continually fusing public transport together. Uh, of course, the power will eventually jump through of its own accord, but for right now it does want a little bit of help. So, this is what I'm going to do now, okay? You can see my thought processes here. Just want to start bringing in this hillside European suburbia. You can see now just from this initial perspective, it just looks a lot more sensible, doesn't it? Because we've followed the terrain heights, we can see this very gradual descent down. We've not just drew roads in where we want. Hello, thousands of people. Where are you all going? <laughs> I'm unsure you're getting the monorail. Yes, you are. And the metro. Okay. Oh yes, there's a metro station here as well, isn't there? Of course. Nice and busy. A lot of these will be coming from uh, the airport. A lot of these tourists. So good to see them all walking into the city to get further public transport. Actually, it looks like the monorail is struggling to clear its stations now, which is a good sign. Yeah, okay. So, monorail line's very busy now in the city. Um, let's bump up by possibly three more extra monorail cars here. Yeah, let's do that. I'll try clear them. Let's have a little look around some of the busier stations. 131 at this one. And then 50 over at the, the Green Cities one. So monorail's getting uh, really busy now, which is good. And the power of monorail, everyone, is, uh, is a good method of public transport. But before we get distracted, yes, you know, we can see. A little bit more respect paid to the terrain now, and it's given us a much nicer flow. So, I'm going to satisfy all of my residential demand by specifically zoning out this hillside suburb. <laughs> it's going to take a while. Uh, but before we do that, let's start zoning up some uh, top level commercial for our little park here. Definitely want some little eateries and restaurants again. Specific asset selection is going to be nice. Um, let's embellish our bus stop a little bit as well. Let's come in and grab a taxi stand. Uh, we will drop this either side. So that's an opportunity for two. That's going to be quite nice. And let's also pop in a zoo cafe about here. That's going to be good. And we can probably squeeze in a vanilla uh, walking pathway to kind of extend the connection with the bus stop there. Okay. Here they come as well. See if anyone gets off here. Cool people getting on. I'm happy with that. So there's a bookstore with a little garden outside. I don't think I'm averse to that. I think we'll leave that one in. Likewise with the little marketplace. I do like the marketplace, but not on the top of a hill, I don't think. Okay, so the suburb is starting to grow out now. The uh, demand is just very slow coming in, so we're just having to wait a little bit. But right, let's start placing some services, and then we can start thinking about something with detail in town that's for this area. So, like I mentioned earlier, we want to be including like elder care and medical centres, police and fire, etc. schools. So, if we place in the elder care centre here, we see the problem with building on terrain in city skylines. We get this happening. It's not great. So, this is a great opportunity to factor in, you know, orientation. So, let's spin this around so it's on the side, which lets the building settle in a lot easier. We do still get a touch of nasty terraforming here, but this is where we can start to bring in some further assets. So, let's come back onto a angle on a road length snap. And then we'll bring this out directly behind. This is going to be great. Let's also drop in uh, the child healthcare centre on the corner here as well. So let's combine this with the park asset first. Let's go for 
perhaps a large playground. And then we'll throw in the child healthcare centre as well. So, you know, even the orientation of your assets in a build like this, that can have a significant difference on how it ends up looking. But again, there's a little bit of nastiness here. Let's move this over a touch, just to give that park a little more breathing room. And then all of your favourite uh, walkability patterns should also be factored into a build like this as well. You know, let's make everyone nice and walkable. There's opportunities for it to happen uh, around here too. You know, I think I actually might go for nature reserve with decorations here. Just so we get the lights during the nighttime cinematics today. Okay, and then we can bring this down. And then let's talk about some further uh, interconnectivity for the airport. So we will forest brush a small little area here for a new road to come in. And hope you don't mind dynamic weather being on during the episodes as well. I've really enjoyed playing in the rain recently in cities. It's, uh, it's been quite a nice addition. Wonderful. Let's continue to increase land value and attractiveness of the area by including uh, some plazas. Definitely get one up here. Maybe a little uh, picnic table number on the far corner as well. Again, just making sure that we're not leaving too far away from the same layer so we don't get the bending in the asset. There we go. We can lose the earthquake sensor now because everything should be jumping through its own accord. And that's going to be wonderful. So now let's just take a little look from elsewhere in the city as to how this suburb is sitting, right? Very much becomes part of the skyline here. I'm happy with the observatory actually as a little kind of point of focus for the build as well. And of course all these areas will grow up uh, during our detailing time lapse once we have the residential demand in. And I've also dropped in uh, a little bit of high density commercial alongside this road here. And uh, this has turned into such a busy little transport centre now. Metro, monorail and bus convergence. So you know the benefit of pre-planning all of these public transport networks now coming into fruition. You know, we're seeing what a difference this makes now. Lots of people getting back into from this area. It's all coming together slowly, isn't it? It's all coming together. So, now let's have a chat before we move into a detailed time lapse about the empty spaces that are left between the houses. So, we're going to go very heavily forested for this, alright? So, I will do some rocks in some places, but we'll talk about this first. So, what I'm going to do here is just make a new brush that is entirely uh, comprised of green trees. Again, if you're on the consoles, uh, you will have access just to spam down uh, green trees anyway. Okay, and then I want to fill the entire area between the houses with green tree, okay? Very strong, very dense palettes, okay? Just fill it all out everywhere you can, and we'll come to see what a difference this makes in a minute as well. Okay, so lots of green tree. Save a little bit for some rock detailing, you know, don't put it everywhere. All the way through here, right behind the houses. Straight the way down here as well. Cool. Continue to identify spots of walkability where we can link people through from different layers. That's going to be fine. The rain is becoming quite irritating now, though, to be fair. <laughs> Let's turn that off. Alright, cool. So lots of green tree. Makes a difference. Then embellish with your chosen theme trees. So things like date palms. California palms if you're in a boreal theme then this is where boreal pines will work nicely alongside your generic pine trees too I want to stick with my live oak and palm patterns that I've been enjoying so much in this city so far Okay So lots of very dense forests between It's really going to help to Sort of decorate the area, right? Sort of a very lush tropical hillside again a very lush boreal hillside if indeed you are within the boreal theme so this is what's going to kill a lot of the empty space for me between these different areas. We can definitely bring in some of the larger rock formations as well, perhaps alongside this space here. Now pick out a few of your different favourite rock assets that you've come to appreciate now, as you've been building kind of your first ever you know, slow detailed city. I think I'm happy with that. And then again, that little green tree palette can now come around all these rock assets. And then we can just flesh out with those pines, the palms, whatever sort of designs and themes you're going for. Some eastern cottonwoods in there too. Definitely the content creator trees are always a strong favourite. And now you just get this very lush forested hillside um, between all your builds. And it really helps to decorate 
a hillside area just because of the way the vanilla game works. It's uh it helps. I hope you agree. <laughs> right? I think it I think it's nice. So they will definitely continue to bring in this design around all of these dead green spaces as the suburb continues to grow. I've also zoned up a little bit of commercial uh, over here because what we do have an opportunity to do is to bring in um, another part life area for which I'm going to use a city park gate. We're going to have this one. Uh, let's see, where do we want it? Let's go for here. We'll paint out that park area. Those park areas will not overlap with airport areas. So if you're doing the same process here, and just be careful of that, that you don't encroach too much into your airport area. Not that you should really ever have a problem with that. Let's create another little airport viewing platform. Because the houses here are sat directly underneath um, the flight path of the airport. This is going to be you know, a really nice kind of purposeful thought out part build. Indeed, lots of your viewing decks are going to be very much appreciated here. You, know, you can come up with a pattern, maybe go for sort of three viewing decks, you know, either side. And then perhaps a little, you know, park restroom or park cafe would also be appreciated over here too. And then we can get lots of our sort of plazas. You know, just another generic park life area. Whatever you want to do here. Perhaps a touch of info booth. Maybe a little cafe over here as well. And then you can border all this off with your patterns. You know, factoring perhaps a little bit of walker builds that loops around here along the side of the park. And then before we know it, you know, we've got a nice little purposeful thought out park here with some viewing decks. You know, for perhaps some plane spotters to come and, you know, sit and enjoy watching the planes come and go from the airport build we did a couple of episodes ago. Yeah, I think that works quite nicely, doesn't it? You know, it's kind of an expanded version of what we did uh, during that airport build with a little park life area here. So we can just piece together some viewing decks. And, you know, it adds more character into the current build alongside builds that we've done for as well. Alright, so hopefully that point comes across quite nicely, doesn't it? We hope so anyway, we hope so. However guys, that does feel like a good point for a detailing time lapse. We have a bunch of work to do, uh, including bringing our very thick uh, green tree forested area with embellishments of pines or palms, depending on which theme you're playing. I think I'm going to upgrade a bunch of the trees on the treed roads into the pink jacarandas. Again, it just adds a little pop of colour in amongst all this sort of new suburb design. Uh, again, more walkability spots where we can squeeze them in to keep the city continually moving. And do a little bit of detailing around our sort of metro monorail hub as well. See if we can remove these power lines now. And um, eventually hook them into the power connection here rather than having them come in because obviously that was just a temporary connection and it's kind of affecting the way the build looks now as well. I drop in some police and fire service assets uh, just so the suburb is served and then hopefully tie it into uh, our downtown skyline a little bit more organically and then allow it to settle into the city's ecosystem. So let's detail up the hillside suburb and we'll be right back.
Okay, guys, that is going to do it for today. I'd like to thank you all so much for watching. If indeed you have enjoyed the episode, then likes, comments, and shares below really help me out. If you'd like to help support me directly, there are links down to Instant Gaming, which is really good for picking up any of the DLCs we've used today that you might not have. Super cheap, and it does help me out. And equally as much if you haven't enjoyed it, then leave me a dislike as well. But you managed to pick up some tips today on how to work with hillsides and respecting the terrain heat map to help map out your initial road network. Giving something on the peak of the suburb, a little bit of a calling point, maybe a couple of uniques like we've done today. A little bit of public transport and commercial plaza action happening. Lots of forest is really helpful for me, at least, and then embellishing with your own uh, sort of chosen tree palette for me. It's palms in Diamond Coast, where it could be oaks or, you know, pines for you. It really depends on your map theme. And hillsides really are one of the more trickier things to work with. And hillsides definitely up there with highway interchanges for me. As to the things I sort of look at them, I'm like, oh, uh, not quite sure how to tackle that. <laughs> but... Hopefully today we've managed to uh, tie in together a really nice new suburban expansion, uh, which is very much part of our skyline with the topography on this map. Please do hang around for the rest of the outro tag. There was a bunch of detail you guys wouldn't have seen, and obviously check out this thing at night time as it sets into the Noob's Guide skyline. And really happy with the little public transport convergence that's happening down on the main road too. Really busy. Monorail's like crazy, crazy busy. So really good. But otherwise, I will shut up and I will leave it there. I'd like to thank you all so much for watching. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day.